This is the very first all-electric Mercedes series production model, the Mercedes EQC. And here at the world premiere in Stockholm, we will bring you everything about the exterior, different trim levels, interior and the prospect of driving this vehicle. Here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Enjoy this premiere here with us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. As I said, we will show you two different stylings here today. This is basically the main electric styling. There's also an AMG line we will show you in depth very soon. But sticking here with this one first, you can see the front is covered by a so-called black panel. So we have a you know, very big front grille or big unit and multi-beam LED headlamps. Those are the top trim headlamps they have at Daimler. They are some standard equipment here already and you can see the daytime running light is connected by another light strip and it's the first time that something like this is actually allowed regulations wise. They had to work on that pretty much and so this one gets a combination of a whole unit in the front. In some markets it will even be possible that the Mercedes star will be illuminated. In Germany I think it will not be allowed, in US I think neither, but uh, we'll keep you updated on that for sure. 4 meter 76 or 15 foot 6 is the total length of the Mercedes EQC. You can see it is a crossover style. It has some SUV look for sure, but it's not as high as you know what we could would conceive as an SUV. Um, if you think about the Mercedes E-Class all-terrain, maybe a little bit higher than that, but not as high as the Mercedes GLC. And speaking of the GLC. This car will first be built in Bremen in Germany and it shares a platform with the GLC compact SUV. They do that to save costs. Of course, it makes sense in a way. The difference is that here in the lower area, there's the battery pack placed, 650 kilograms of weight, adding to the overall weight of 2.4 tons. Yes, that's heavy but we have the experience that it's not too bad for electric vehicles since you can use the recuperation. Then rim goes from 19 inch to 21. This one here is a 20 inch rim and it's covered very much everything. So just some holes left. This is to reduce the wind um, or to increase the wind efficiency. Very interesting. And of course the EQC logo here. EQ, they're launching that as a separate electric brand for all of the models. The rest of the side profile, they do not use roof rails for the same wind efficiency reasons, but they have those, you know, attachments there that you can still put something on the roof, but without extra chrome roof rails. And in the rear, it does somehow resemble a GLC, also with this Copay style ending and with strong shoulders. And even more interesting if you compare the AMG line to that one then later. And I want to hear then, which one do you like more? And in the rear, the defining element is this light strip that goes all over the vehicle as well. At the first sight, I was thinking a little bit of Renault Talisman Estate. Okay, maybe, you know, Mercedes people don't want to hear about that. Maybe they rather want to hear, oh, it also looks like the new Porsche Macan. <laughs> because Porsche is also using uh, this light strip here now. So it has become a very famous element in the automotive industry and of course looks pretty cool at night. So overall you can see they were not, you know, um, too conservative on the design. You see those electric styling elements. But then again, you know, it's also not a super revolution. So they try to meet every taste. But of course you can pick those different trim versions then as well. What do you think here about this version or also called when I refer to the interior, electric art. That's you know, what they're saying. And here you can see the AMG line styling, way more aggressive and also looks more normal at the same time, so less electric. So the question is, do you want to you know, have people knowing that you are driving an electric vehicle or do you want to have it you know, in a normal sporty, for example, AMG style way? then this would be your choice here with a stronger lower bumper and you already see some of the rims, so more details to that. 
This one here, for example, also has this uh, sidestep here. We've recently also seen our Mercedes GLS review. And now the top rims, 21 inch. Wow, those are really massive. And I would really love to see those spinning. And well, if you ask me, I mean, I'm always a fan of progressive designs, but somehow the vehicle does fit better with the AMG line. Or what do you think? Talking about the engine, by the way, or here it just is a motor because there's a combustion engine. When we say about electricity, we just use the word motor. There's one in the front and one in the back. And together they have a horsepower output of about 408 horsepower. And the front one is activated when just like, you know, just less power is being used. So it will be front wheel drive when you're just driving slowly. And as soon as you apply more power, then also the rear one will be activated and you will have an all-wheel drive car. And so the rear motor is also directly set up to have the, you know, the, the power surges, for example. And so Mercedes says that both together work more efficiently. The battery pack, by the way, that is placed in the lower part, has 80 kilowatt hours of capacity. And that means the range will probably well, the original figure is 450 kilometers or 280 miles, but in, you know, in realistic terms, it will be maybe 400 kilometers or 300 something, or then 200 something miles as a realistic figure. That's what we can say. And the acceleration figure, when you go all the way forward with both motors then, is 5.1 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And this is pretty quick and is rather in a region of, you know, between a 43 and a 63 model for sure. I mean, styling-wise, people will know that it's fast. And in the rear, you can also see a little sport here oriented, this AMG line, also with a diffusor in the lower part. And I'm so glad they did not go the way for the fake exhaust. That would have been pathetic with an electric vehicle. So they just left it blank. And I think this could also be a model for the petrol or diesel cars, which don't have, you know, the big exhaust in the rear. Just leave it blank. It's a more, you know, a cleaner design overall. And just to add you another figure there, because the newton meter output will be 765. So 765 newton meters of torque maximum power output there. Really interesting. I'm just, you know, splitting the figures a little bit because if I, you know, repeat 10 figures directly after each other, hardly anyone will remember it. So more figures throughout the review, of course, and the interior is still to come. And one feature, one optional one we do not see here yet will be you know, somewhere here, because there will be a tow bar. The towing capacity will be at 1.8 tons. And I mean, that's quite good for the electric community, so to say, because so far you can only, you know, have some serious um, towing with the Tesla Model X over two tons. This one, a little bit less with 1.8 tons, but it is an electric vehicle with a towing capacity. So that, you know, gives you more flexibility and for people who want to combine both electric vehicle and you know, having a trailer with something. And talking about charging, well, you do it right here. This is the right end of the car. And it starts with a 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger for the um, for the AC current. And then you can see that will be in the upper part. And in the lower part, you also have the DC connector that will be, you know, everything will be covered then by the, by the whole plug. And depending on the region you're buying this car, you will either have a CCS DC standard or the Chedimo standard. So they adapted on the market where it is basically predominant. And then you have the 110 kilowatt hour charging um, power basically and that can bring the car from zero to 80 percent of the charge in about 40 minutes but mainly with the electric vehicles is that you don't you know totally drive them empty you always keep them about like 30 40 percent or something directly charge at home or at work again so i think is more important that you have a charging infrastructure at home or at work when you're a five-day commuter. That's more important than any charging figures and stuff because you can also put a normal household plug-in when you start from zero. You will have a, you know, you will need a whole day to recharge a car fully. But if you know, put it in after every drive, which would be easy when you have a war box, maybe in a basement garage or in a personal garage, then it will be quite easy and also some hours are enough to refresh the car a little bit or maybe you, you sleep overnight and then it's full again. So I think it's even more about the infrastructure.
So what about the interior? Let's open the door and yes, the car does feel GLC alike. You can see the resemblance and I mean, it's the plant where the all C-Class models are getting built. Here you can see this is a new design element here for sure. Very interesting to, it's pretty, you know, you can feel that, you know, very interesting. Um, also plush and soft materials on the inside. Fabric is being used, then all of the galvanized buttons. So it looks like a real good build quality. That's also, you know, um, an advantage if you use existing platforms or existing cars, they're already proven to be working. And then you can see this is the AMG interior. And let me just deactivate this gong for a second there. Switch off lights, yes. So here, yeah, that's better sound for you then. So um, the AMG line starts with a standard as is, you know, sporty, flat steering wheel, aluminum pedals, that's always standard with the AMG line and the seats. Those ones are the optional animal skin pack, but the base AMG model will have what you can see in white now, microfiber dynamic car, as we also know from the all other AMG lines and cars, and on the outside then uh, leatherette. This is a sustainable and sporty solution, so you can just stay with the base setup of this car when you have the AMG line, very interesting. Oh, there's a door sill, that's remarkable, as you can see uh, that they could fit the batteries in the lower part. This whole area is higher, then you have a door sill which goes inward. That is um, something remarkable for sure. Seating here, yeah, I mean, it, it indeed feels rather like a GLC, which is, again, not a bad thing at all, because the GLC is a great car, it's a great compact SUV. Um, headroom, I mean, I'm one with 86 or 6 foot 1, and this is also totally fine, so nothing to complain about that. I was, you know, a little bit afraid that this maybe doesn't have enough headroom because of the batteries in the lower part for the front. Again, no problem. Let's see how that plays out in the rear. Interesting, by the way, also that they used new materials here at the dashboard. Also, there's, you know, some fabric at the dashboard here, new air vents. So they tried to implement some new styling elements for this one. And you will soon take a look when you sit behind me, but here already you can see this dual screen setup, 10.25 inch left and right. And here it's not optional, it comes with every EQC. You have this setup and when you have turned everything off, um, I'm not sure if I can get that word now, but when everything's off, all is black and it's basically one black panel. And when it's on, then you have those two screens visible then here with the instruments and right then with the rest of the infotainment. And steering wheel, we know that. Left side Distronic, the adaptive cruise control, which has some cool new features now, by the way. For example, it's connected with the GPS, and when there's a traffic jam ahead, you know, an end of a traffic jam, and you're driving really fast on the German motorway, for example, then the ACC automatically gets the signal, the information, and sets the speed to at least, you know, 100, reduces to 100, then you're already a little bit slower. Yes, I mean, for, for German motorways, 100 is slow, yes, <laughs> if there's no traffic. So it's good that there's a GPS connection, then you're already a little bit slower, it adds safety and also that was, uh, you know, I was asking it myself too. When you have those uh, lane keeping assistants and there's a traffic jam, you need the um, corridor for the emergency vehicles. The Rettungsgasse, the famous German Rettungsgasse. This vehicle here now has a system that this emergency lane does work. So when you're on the left lane, it moves a little bit to the left. So it's not oriented on the center way, it moves a little to the left. Or when you're on the right one, it moves a little bit to the right that the emergency vehicles can pass although you have the traffic jam assist running and stuff. Very interesting idea, and finally, someone thinks of that. By the way, shout out to cameraman Jonas in the back there. A lot of stress always at those world premieres, but he's keeping the camera all steady for you. Now, the whole cockpit overview. You can see again this dual screen setup. Then again, this fabric used here on the dashboard. Very interesting. Cool to see new materials and also more sustainable ones, for example. Then this part is all different from the other Mercedes we've seen so far. Those copper elements here or rose gold, like the iPhone style, they call it, with some more space right there. I mean, why not? There's a start stop button and then the screens on the right hand the right thumb you'll be able to control the right screen and with your left thumb then on the left side you'll be able to control the left screen for example with the charging state as well but 
the main purpose will be the normal, the digital instruments right there. There's also um, you know, a sound system available and an optional, very cool one. You can see, you know, this is perforated. I think there will be something of the sound system inside there. I also see a gap here for the head-up display, which will be available. We cannot see it right now. And the rest of the middle console, this is actually quite known. I have read that you can also pick some different stylings. I'm not sure if also the middle console is, um, you know, uh, meant by that. But you can also get like aluminum insert or wood insert. I hope it will also be available for the middle console. We'll soon check out the other vehicle. This is also a control pad um, from the new MBUX, the, um, this new infotainment system we know also from the Mercedes A class so you can not only control it with the thumb button uh, it's not activated at the moment but also here with the lower part just you know with swiping for example and then I have a home button um, and you can go through for example also let's go to the GPS navigation see how that one plays out and you can also zoom in and out like pinch and zoom on this on this touchpad here and also one specialty of this new MBUX system is the voice control. I'm not sure if it's activated here now in the show car. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? I'm cold. I'm sorry. I can't set the temperature at the moment. So, you know, maybe heard that, um, so she cannot set the temperature at the moment because the car is maybe not powered as much. But it works like this. You either say, hey Mercedes, or you press the button at the steering wheel and then you can, for example, say, you know, I'm cold or set temperature to 22 degrees Celsius or drive me to somewhere. And this is among the industry so far one of the best systems for the voice, voice recognition. We've tested that with the all new Mercedes A class. So you should check that one out as well. Pretty cool to have that one. And that's also here in the EQC. In the lower part, we know that from the other platform siblings with the um, oh, there's a USB-C slot now instead of a normal USB slot. Mm, I'm not such a fan, but some of you are. And also inductive charging for your smartphone is available right there. So it's, I would say, a little pimped GLC. And to me, that's good. You know, you don't have to get used to it that much. And, you know, with some of the styling elements, so pretty um, fine with me so far. And the middle console here with two more USB-C slots and some more stuff to put. So, and let's get in the rear. I have set the seat as I would be driving. That's actually also like in a GLC, so you have enough um, knee room right there left. Now the question is headroom. Hey, it works. So it raises a little bit to the rear. I can still sit here as a tall adult. So in the GLC F-cell, for example, um, I was sitting here too high, but that's not um, a problem right there. So that's pretty cool. So a cozy seating position here also for an adult in the rear. You still have a middle tunnel, um, although there's no mechanical connection. That's also, you know, due to the platform and somewhere they have to put some, some more parts, of course. But overall, I think it's a good result here for the rear. You can also flip the seats. Let's see. I'm not sure where, but we can also take a look at the trunk because that's also very important. Uh, let's see if there's also... No, I'll go to the front to open the trunk. They can also see the opening mechanism right there. So here we go with the electric tailgate right there. And you see it's a little bit higher um, maybe than usual. Um, electric motor parts are also placed below that. Some more space below. But you can see very well usable. And here you'll also be able to flip the seats in. The right one is not activated yet, but there you can also load things through. Overall, you know, a little bit l higher maybe than in other cars, but we've seen it also with the Audi e-tron, probably the same, but still very well usable. And to show you a different styling, this one here is the so-called electric art line. And, well, they mean the interior by that, but I just transport that for myself to the exterior because it somehow makes sense. And um, I'll close the door once more because look here at the inside of the door, how well this is done. And also this indigo blue color, so a dark blue tone of the blue and also on the seats you can see right there that the inside of the seats we know that from a base Mercedes E-Class for example as well or from C-Class 2 there's a fabric on the inside and they call that fabric Sunny Veil just a name for it and it's available here in the indigo blue or also in the beige and then combined with leatherette on the outside they call it Artico or Ambitex it's of great well you, no one would ever know that it's not 
not real leather. So this is a very good example. Finally, someone of the premium manufacturers understood that you can com combine luxury and sustainability, especially also with interior materials. Uh, while Audi is feasting on the animal skin used still, Tesla, you know, already has removed all animal skin from the seats to be more sustainable and also to meet, you know, the demands of their customers. Now Mercedes combines this here with the electric vehicle that totally makes sense. So you can get this one here, this base trim or electric art trim in two colors and with the fabric on the inside, leather on the outside, or then the AMG trim with the microfiber. That would be the microfiber on the inside then and on the leather on the outside. So they have still animal skin in their lineup, but it's a really great step forward that they offer more alternatives which are more sustainable really cool to see that here and you can see some other styling elements which are different from the AMG line here this um, yard style is also this yard style roundup is also in blue and this is the normal steering wheel not the AMG steering wheel with a round form and some more glossy black I hope you can also switch that around maybe with with wood also in the middle really hope that because I'm not so keen on the glossy black but overall I mean Interesting, great styling. It has a conservative basis, more interpreted in a new modern way. Also with, you know, some new materials and some more daring colors. Really, really cool. Oh, what do you think? And finally, the front. This is the front hood, basically. Well, there's, of course, not a combustion engine right there. But you can see they kept the style of the combustion engine, also with an illumination. Very interesting. They just needed the space for all the parts that have to be in the car. You know, this front, also a radiator still needs some cooling, not as much, but some. And also, you know, on the front axle, there's, of course, one of the electric motors also stored. Very interesting styling-wise, but no additional luggage area here in the front. So for the conclusion, Jonas and I take some fresh breeze the outside, a fantastic landscape here close to Stockholm. I really enjoy being here always when I'm here, so really, really beautiful. So what about this car? Very interesting for sure on the exterior. It's not a revolution, but you can pick between this electric styling and also this classic AMG styling, which has the sporty attitude. I think it fits the car a little bit better, but it's also good that you have the choice between both things. Then on the interior you see some GLC styling elements for sure because they do share the platform. I think it's not a bad thing but then some spiced up stuff also with sustainable materials um, available you know also on a wide choice and also very high class good build quality and some more color nuance and a little bit more progressive than the non-electric models. To me that was just exactly right. Really really cool. And there's also enough room left for the rear bench and for the trunk, so you don't have to compromise on that when you buy an electric vehicle. It will have massive amounts of power. About the range, I'm a little bit skeptic about that. I think a little bit bigger battery with a little bit more range would have been suitable better. Then talking about the price, 70, 80,000 euros would be realistic, I think in the region of the Audi e-tron or also, you know, going towards Tesla Model X and the Jaguar I-Pace, they somehow all have approximately the same range and battery size. Tesla, of course, a little bit more, in the high, but also in the high, only in the higher trims. And also, you know, all come close as for the price. They stick to those higher, bigger segments so far because it's easier to have the proper margin on the product that you can also, you know, you have to earn money with the car at some point. The revolution for the electric masses that's of course not the case, not only you know, not for a premium manufacturer, but I mean electric A class would change more from a whole you know mobility perspective. That will come later then. And let, let me give you some you know general outlook about the electric mobility. The Volkswagen AG, for example, with all the different brands, they have the MEB platform, 10 million cars on just this platform in a couple of next years. They can pick the own platform and you know have the pros uh, for, for that. But at the same time, the premium manufacturers, which are building less cars, less amount of cars, they are now more in the strategy of implementing the electric vehicles in their existing platforms. BMW tried the separate platform before, failed because it was too cost-intensive for them. Now going with the integrated will be, for example, electric 3 Series. Mercedes now using the GLC platform, and the Audi e-tron is also you know, something A6 alike, MLB. Audi will later then be able to also to share the electric platforms but so far 
the premium manufacturers more have the strategy now to integrate in existing platforms, also to make it cost effective. Very interesting, those different strategies. So it will remain very exciting on the electric car market. And I hope you enjoyed our exclusive preview here, exterior, interior today. And also, you know, gave you some hints of what it might be to drive this vehicle. Maybe one last detail, because I haven't talked about the shifting pedals on the steering wheel. Pull them right and you have less recuperation. Pull them left and you will have more recuperation. So you will have either the sailing perspective or the strong recuperation, one pedal feeling perspective. So with this detail, we'll now get out of this review. Been very exciting. Glad you joined us here and watched all till the end. And of course, we'll keep you updated when we were able to have the full driving review of the Mercedes EQC.